Tons of shinies, tons of unknown, tons of really cool Pokemon people. There'll be tons it's of battling mostly, this year. It's mostly the fun of the experience. You get some cool stuff, but the the experience of going and uh, everybody's really just having fun. Well, so the trade bait nerding, must be nice. Nerding out. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even really get very many good trades, but yeah, there's some good trades out there. It's just that everybody's asking for the world for good stuff. So you end up blowing your specials on stuff that you might regret uh, or you don't do it at all. Guys. No, I mean not trading at GoFest, but oh, like live? You come back oh, with live. regionals and unknowns that you can trade for like legacy mons and stuff. Yeah, well, so like, Alright, so we are live. I think we're probably going to stay in a hostel together. Oh, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Alright, so we are live. Myself and my buddy and my oh, are gonna uh, drive down. Oh, drive or fly down, hopefully. I'm just gonna non rev in. Boy. All right. So being on air, Kingdom Cup. Okay, uh, which team? Let me pull that up first. Oh yeah. Okay. We're just gonna jump right into team reviews. No comments on developing Pokemon. Y'all like or anything like that. Okay, well, I guess a little um, uh, preface first before, because the site that I'm using for the team builder doesn't actually have Gen 7. Um, your Melmetal is actually going to be, um, I don't know, pick a stupid Pokemon. Ditto. Camera up. Pick a stupid valid Pokemon that can actually go on. Camera up. No, people Camera will actually up. put D that in on the team. Ditto. I believe there's no missing no here. <laughs> Alright, you know what? It's gonna be... Um, Mega Rayquaza is gonna be Melmetal. Dang! Wow. Attack inflation. <laughs> Certainly qualifies for Great League and is very viable with its We're out of the world attack. Well, how about the fact that they made its own tier for it? Yeah. You know, just normal stuff. Uh, where is Marowak? There it is. Okay, so first team is uh, Karthik. I, I'm not pronouncing that name. One of you guys can tag. Wait, him. did we skip uh, Bella's team? Uh, the Great League team? It's a Great League team. I don't know. Are we doing Kingdom or Great League? Let's open it up with a Great oh, League. Why not? Okay. We're going to jump into yeah, Kingdom Pop like all night. Yeah. Okay. Give me a second then. Um, it's Bastido and Cresselia. Alrighty. So. Um. Mega Ray is Melmetal, which I just lost. God damn it. There it is. Okay. Last you done. Uh, you guys can keep discussing your stuff while I set this up. Alright, so we're looking at Bastiodon, Confusion Grisalia, Metacham, Azumarill, Altaria, and Melmetal. Right off the bat, doesn't this team seem susceptible to Deoxys defense? I mean, this was way before Deoxys defense, but yeah. Oh. This was, what, two weeks ago? Right at, right, like, but, the day before it was announced, I think. But yeah, that is pretty open to it, I'd agree. Isn't it totally open to it? I think, uh... Does anything check it? I don't know Doesn't how Chris, I think Chris, I think Cresselia checks it, I thought, but I might be wrong. I thought DD beats Cresselia. Does he? Run that right now. Especially with I need confusion. More, I need more familiarity with DD. Because of ex I mean, I expect to see it a lot in the upcoming weeks, especially 
regionals and worlds. Sorry, I cut someone off. I think Psycho Cut Cresselia checks it, but not Confusion. Yeah, that's my thinking. I'm about to run it. And I know Metacham loses, but isn't it pretty close? Like, doesn't Metacham get it down to like 20 HP or something? Yeah, it's close. But you yeah, sure really needs want that team. Yeah, Cresselia needs a Psycho Cut with shields to beat it. Unless you run a aura beam, then you would need a weird fake somewhere in there. But confusion crest just loses outright. I think my big thing here is I don't know if I really like the double steel. The bastion and the, the melma. Oh yeah, that is true. I just I think, think there's a little too much function. Yeah, I think there's too much overlap in what they do, and also there's too much overlap in what they lose to. And do you really want to bring both in the same team of three? Because that's kind of my general rule of thumb is like if there's two similar mons if you'd be happy bringing both in the same team of three then it's fine but if you're only ever going to bring one at a time then you should probably drop one for different coverage. Right. It's like they have like wildly ranging areas of coverage. Melmud is a little bit better in these Zoomeril fights. The Bastidon chunks it just fine. Unless Zoomeril has Hydro Pump. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so probably drop Melmetal and then try to pick up um, a Defense Deoxys counter of some form. Fortress. Fortress, or you could do like Alolan Muck. Um, I think. Gun tank maybe. Gun tank does worse um, against it though. Okay, well, a little muck or even Umbreon works. Sableye, Haunter, uh, Shadowball, yes. Hypno. Um, Psy Shock Hypno the, flex the other legacy. But that doesn't win. <laughs> yeah, but it's still a flex. <laughs> it's a bad <laughs> flex. <laughs> Um, I think Mew beats it too. So, like, there's some options out there for sure. Um, so I'd probably drop Mill Metal and pick up one of those. Alright. Um, should we start the team review or should we wait till more people yeah. get here? No, let's just keep going. Alright, let me go yeah. back to that team then. The team of Karthik Borzaj. That's my best. That's my best shot at it. Didn't get any better than that. We're looking at Flygon, uh, Lucario, Lucario, Bastidon, Altaria, Alolan Marowak, and Melmetal. So again, running into the same issue that we just had with the freestyle team, um, you have a lot of overlap between, yeah, metal, metal, metal and uh, whoever that is. Can you mute your mic, please? It's it's Carthic. Well, it's Hey, I'm just gonna mute you temporarily, and then I'll unmute you once. Um... He muted himself. You're good. Okay. But yeah, we'll just yes, I... finish going okay. through this, and then we'll unmute you once we get the comments in. Yeah, so I agree there. The the double steel, um, I'm just not really a fan of because um, there's overlap again, and it just makes you kind of vulnerable to like. Lucario or Flygon or even Blaziken. And I think my biggest question is why he's not running Lapras.
Mm. Yeah, my only thing would be swap out uh, a more Bastion. Like, pick one of the two. Preferably swap out Mel Metal. But. So, Karthik, what's the reason uh, you don't have a Lapras uh, on hand, or you just decided not to run one? Uh, well, because. Uh... See, I'm using Melmetal, right? Uh, I'm, like, I do have an advantage over Rockman and um, the Thunderbolt for the Lapras cover. So I thought of in thinking of, uh, like, bringing the Lapras, which will, like, pick a counter for that. Hmm. I'm having so, some yeah. trouble understanding. Can you guys hear what he's saying? Uh, I no, I can't. I There's too much background noise. Can you hear it now? Yeah, you're better. Yeah. Now. Repeat that, please. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I do have a lapis with water gun and stuff. But the thing is, I, uh, like, instead of bringing the lapis, I thought of like bringing its counter, right? So whenever I see an opponent's lapis, I, uh, I can just bring Melmetal. Like, you can use both Rock Slide and Thunderbolt, which is both super effective on a lapis. So because okay. of that, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to temporarily mute you again just because of the background noise. Um, I think I get the gist of it. See, the thing is with Mel Metal, he doesn't actually reliably counter Lapras, even though, even though he's got super effective moves against Lapras. If you run the simulators on him with uh, pvpoke.com, he, uh, he doesn't reliably win all shield scenarios. Sometimes he even loses. And then um, just because someone has a Lapras on their team, uh, doesn't mean that's your uh, necessarily your number one concern, and it doesn't mitigate you needing one yourself. Um, bringing another counter to Lapras isn't going to make you le uh, need your own Lapras less. There's other substitutes to Lapras that fill similar roles, but bringing a Mel Metal is just going to give you more options against Lapras, say, rather than not needing a Lapras yourself. Yeah, it's kind of two different functions here because Lapras and Melmetal fill completely different roles. You know, Lapras is the one that uh, beats um, pretty much all the fire types. Um, and honestly, Lapras beats beats or ties a very high percentage of the meta here. There's not too many reliable Lapras counters, and that's why it's so strong. So you're kind of depriving yourself of that option. Yeah. Um, before I go ahead and unmute you, there there are there are a few alternatives to Lapras. Um, the biggest, the I guess the biggest uh, biggest Lapras options right now have been um, Water Gun Surf, along with uh, Dragon Ball. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you, uh, Sark Techie. You're getting a lot of background noise. Um, so anyway, you, you can run Lapras, and the most popular choices right now are Water Gun, Surf, and then either Dragon Pulse or Ice Beam. Of course, those two are legacy. You can choose to run Blizzard instead, and it's still serviceable. Or just, if you're on a budget, only run Surf and fake out the Ice Beam and Dragon Pulse. Most serious tournament goers aren't going to aren't going to just assume you don't have a, a legacy, you know, that's a bit risky. They might, you know, take the risk on a shield bait, but uh, they're not going to assume off the bat that you don't have Dragon Pulse or Ice Beam. Another option um, for, instead of Lapras that fills sort of the same role, would be Dragonair. He has very similar counters and checks, and he does flip certain matches, um, but he does have a similar role since he's got Aqua Tail. And he's able to spam similarly to how Lapras is able to spam Surf. Would you guys any add anything to that? No, I think you got that spot on. Okay, Karthik, I'm gonna unmute you, and if you want to ask any questions, now's the time. Uh, yeah, like I, uh, yeah, like I, uh, I do get like. I'll be replacing Melmetal with Lapras because I do see a lot of uh, advantages like oh, using a Lapras over a Melmetal. 
but i do was, uh, was considering like bringing a steelix or something like i do wanted some suggestions like, on using that because in my community there are a lot of people like they're preferring steelix over a lot of other mons so like i don't want to bring a, bring a pokemon in, in which i end up uh, having a mirror match every single time so i do want to have an upper hand over my community so like i was considering what but the steelix would be better to add as a, uh, as a pokemon in some, in to replace a mon in my team or should i just ignore it um okay i can uh, kind of take that after you meet yourself again um so um steelix fills a pretty similar role to bastiodon it beats a lot of the same things with um the couple caveats that it sacrifices the charizard matchup which bastiodon wins pretty handily whereas steelix loses um and it also sacrifices the Lap- lapras matchup where um lapras and bastiodon are fairly even but La- lapras can uh, definitely beat steelix but on the flip side steelix is able to uh beat bastiodon and steelix also beats melmetal um so those are kind of the trade-offs there um and so if you were wondering about running steelix um the play would probably be um to drop i mean i think you should only run one steel anyway so i would suggest dropping melmetal regardless um and then if you wanted to run steelix you could drop bastiodon in favor of steelix um which might help because if you said you're worried about opposing Steelixes, well, Steelix does beat Bastiodon in that head-to-head. And then the other thing is if you're worried about um, other people running Steelix, um, that's all the more reason to run Lapras. Absolutely. Yeah. And one question in our uh, live stream chat on Discord was about um, is it more viable to run leg- uh, a non-Legacy Water Gun Surf Lapras or a Lapras alternative like uh, Dragonair. I think that entirely depends on your team composition. Um, you'd have to look at your Dragonair matchups, see how you fare against them with the rest of your team, and be able to say, would I be able to, I guess, would, would faking out with a Surf, a Water Gun Surf Lapras, um, would, would I be able to uh, do better with a Dragonair or, or with that Water Gun Surf? Um, there's not a clear-cut answer to that. Uh, choose to master uh, it just really depends on the rest of your team composition to be honest though i think you know having been up against uh, a dragon air with two moves versus having used water gun surf lappers without a double move i tend to favor the dragon air i think it's got more flexibility to it and even though it loses to altaria it does put a pretty serious dent into it and it doesn't need shields to do it Yeah, because the problem is ca- uh, charge moves is what I meant to say. Yeah, because I I've run a mono uh, water gun surf lapras as well, and the problem is, um, I mean, you get completely walled by Kingdra, and um, you kind of struggle to do damage against Altaria as well. Yeah, it is really strange in this cup. If I find out that um, they either have Dragon Pulse, um. Well, if I find out they have Dragon Pulse, or if I find out that they don't have a secondary legacy move, um, I'm a lot less afraid to bring Altaria into that Lapras matchup because I know that it's pretty much a guaranteed win um, against the Mono Surf one. So I'd start. Yeah. And so Karthik, just I guess in the in this in the spirit of team building, what I'd recommend is going into the pin messages. Um, there's a post, uh, a link posted by uh, Polymers Up, and it's got some good um, good feedback on how to kind of sort of build your team, especially at the end in the in the notes. And it's got a good infographic to kind of get an idea of what the different categories are. And then from there you move on. I I totally understand the spirit of wanting to double up encounters to Lapras, for example. Um, we would do that a lot in Tempest. And you can still do that here. You just don't want to sacrifice your coverage towards other things. So if you drop Lapras entirely in favor of, let's say, Melmetal, well then, you 
with that team, I forget what you were weak to specifically, but let's just say for the sake of argument, you might be weak to uh, Flygon, for example. And then anybody running a Flygon will be able to steamroll your team. And you definitely don't want that. Do you guys have anything to add? Um, no, but um, one th another thing he could consider if he did want to run two steel types is he could consider Bronzong because um, I think, if I'm correct, Bronzong goes fairly even with Lapras. Is that right? Yeah, Bronzong takes Lapras in uh, zero and then generally ties around one shield. But if it doesn't tie, then it takes Lapras out of commission. Essentially, Bronzong unless generally one beats... comes in next. Yeah. Get, uh, Lapras. Right, that's right. what I found. So, it yeah, so if you wanted to run a second steel type, he could drop no metal and run bronze on, because that would give him either a win or like a close loss against Lapras, and also give him extra coverage against, like, say, Blaziken, um, and it it also checks Charizard, so um, it makes him less less weak to some of those other options. Right, I'm gonna again, you one more time. But, uh, but again, I think it's risky, and you have to like have really thought it out if you're gonna not be running Lapras here. Like, you can definitely make it work, but um, you definitely have to think through all those matchups and make sure you're covering what Lapras covers through other mons. Okay. Karthik, did you have anything else you wanted to bring up? You're unmuted. Uh, like, yeah, uh, in my previous team, I had Flygon with uh, Mudshot, Dragon Claw, and Earthquake. And I just replaced it with uh, Charizard with Fire Blast, uh, Blast Burn, and uh, Dragon Claw. So, uh, like, how would that affect the overall um, performance of my team? I, like, I just replaced a Flygon because I had two Dragon. If I, if I have a Flygon in my team, I'll have two Dragons now, Alteria and Flygon. So, I'll be pretty much weak to like. Anything ice. So because of that, in order to cover these uh, special, specific ice Pokemon, I just bought Charizard. So how would that uh, cover uh, be an entire coverage for my team? Well, I'm not so sure you were... Uh, even with the Flygon in there, I'm not so sure you'd be worried about ice, given that you have Bastiodon, um, you have Alolan Marowak, and you have Lucario all in there already. Um, you know, swapping Flygon for Charizard, whether it's a good or a bad idea, is um, it, it, they just don't serve the same roles. Um, if if you look at that, if you if you pull up the infographic that we put together, um, what you'll see, and I'm pulling it up myself so I can uh, I can reference it. Do you want to post a graphic in the live stream chat, AJ? Sure. Okay. I mean, the most polarizing thing about. So, well, so here's the thing. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just thinking like Flygon would take out Bastiodon. Well, Flygon would take out most things. It would take out um, Charizard. But its biggest problem for the both of the two is Altaria then. Or even Lapras. So, like, the yeah. thing about Flygon is that it counters Bastiodon. Charizard loses to Bastiodon. Flygon, um, well, let's see, what else? Uh, Flygon would beat Alolan Marowak. Charizard loses to Alolan Marowak. Um, Flygon generally uh, goes yeah. about even with Lucario. Charizard straight up counters Lucario. Um, Charizard and Flygon, they both lose to Altaria, and they both lose to Lapras, but they have uh, very different relationships elsewhere, and Flygon is functioning less so as a dragon type, and much more so as a ground type, because, as you said, you're running Mudshot for that energy gain, and then Earthquake. Earthquake is your main move, Dragon Claw is there for a little bit of coverage and then shield baiting. So, I 
I think you just need to review your matchups a little bit and see where what you are replacing should have similar functions to what you had earlier, right? In the balance of your team. Um, but maybe you're you're covering for, for something that you're weak to. So suppose you were weak to Bastion. Well, you wouldn't just, um, or let's say, suppose you were weak to uh, Altaria, right? You wouldn't just substitute, you wouldn't just take away Lucario and add, uh, I don't know, a, a Bronzong just because you want to have another counter to Altaria, right? You would want to substitute Bronzong with something that's doing a similar role, say a flex spot. So that's that's kind of the point there. Okay. Yeah, and uh, besides that article and graphic, there's also um, pinned in both of the Kingdom Cup channels is a spreadsheet posted by Gotzi, um that has all the like simulation data for all the main meta matchups, um, and it has like conditional formatting that's like color coded. And so you can kind of scan through the rows and columns and see um, kind of what each mon is good and bad against and get an idea of the matchups from there, too. Okay. All right. Well, if nothing else, I think we can uh, move on. If you have further questions, Karthik, I just post them in the live stream chat and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. We do kind of need to move on to some of the other teams, though. So. Uh, choose to master. I think you're here. Um, you posted a little bit off the beaten path a great league team, I believe. Quagsire with Mudshot, Acid Spray, and Stone Edge. Bastidon with Smackdown, Flamethrower, and Stone Edge. Metacham with the standard. Well, actually, not center moveset. He's got Counter, Psychic, and Pull Up Punch. Power up um, punch. It's for them. What did I say? Pull up punch. Yeah. He's power up punch. punch. <laughs> and uh, Mew with Shadow Claw, either Dragon Claw or Psy Shock, and Wild Charge. Considered Ice Beam or what Focus is that Blast. Thing? I guess. Focus Blast Maybe. probably. And then Magneton, Dual Legacy, and Altaria. So he's got some comments. I realize it's more fun than optimal, but just trying to see what the holes are in coverage, what I need to worry most about. Biggest thing I see is that Mew is my only Metachem answer, which is why I would run Psychic instead of Ice Punch for the mirror. Swap Tropius in for Altaria to help with Azu and the Mud Boys. Swap Hunter, Hypno, or Alolan Marowak for Mew to counter fighting harder. So he's thinking Bastiodon and Magneton is probably doubling up on weaknesses too much. So what do you guys think about this team? Well, does does Psychic actually help you reliably win the mirror for Metacham? I'm not so sure that's true. I mean, it, it depends on if you can land it. Or not. If you land it, you're going to win the mirror. If not, then no. But like, if, right. if somebody's like overcharging and not immediately going for the power up punches, then you're already queued into something. Yeah. Like, hey, something's yeah. going on. He probably has psychic. Um, then that also gives you the opportunity to potentially shield bait, but you're also losing on the power up punch and counter damage within that window. So it's, it's largely a huge risk reward type thing. Late game, it can work out well, but early game, I found that running Psychic on Metacham doesn't help too much. I, I think I if suppose. he really wants his Metacham to win the mirror, I think he might need to run, like, Psycho Cut Psychic. Counter, and I've tried that simulation a million times. I'm still pretty no, sure the counter does better. better. Yeah, even counter. in the mirror match. It used to be that, can, yeah, it used to be that uh, Psycho Cut was better, but... After Power Punch was introduced, uh, Counter became 
Farley superior. Or not Farley mm-hmm. superior, but superior. So no, I definitely, I, actually, I have definitely know that counters better, but I was just thinking psycho cut so that you can charge up to a psychic faster. Yeah, I think you'd still want the counter, um, just because it's better uh, against the rest of the field. I'm actually running a few sims in sandbox mode. So here's the thing, right? If you were in the Metacham mirror match, you would never shield the first power of punch. So it's pretty fair to, uh, in most cases at least, assume you would get the psychic in. So if you sacrifice boosting power of punch in the first turn and just use psychic instead, um, you still win the mirror with about 53 HP. And then you just get a, you finish it off with a power of punch and at least you're boosted. So that, you know, take that for what it's worth. I think Psychic is pretty reliably going to beat uh, the mirror match. Especially okay, with that's fair. Um, but as far as the rest of your team. So you're concerned about Metacham, and you dropped Altaria in favor of Tropius. I guess there is a fair amount of balance. Um, perhaps a Hydro Pump play rough. Azumarl would would do a number on this team, the way it stands. Barring Tropius, of course. Um, Hydro Pump does well against Quagsire. Beats Bastiodon. Still beats Medicham. uh, Definitely beats Mew with those moves. Beats... I don't know about Magneton. I think... Magneton Wait. certainly can't survive a... You said Azumarill beats Mew with Wild Charge? Yeah. Even with Wild Charge? I think so. Wow. Because the Shadow, Shadow Claw is only neutral damage, and Azumarill is really bulky. So Azumarill can tank at least Shadow Claw is resistant charge. by Fairy. No, it's not. No. It's oh, just it's neutral. Not? Huh. I can never... It seems like Hunter always really struggles with the Shadow Claw. Yeah, in that matchup, it's just, or Shadow it's Punch. Just it's just because it's, it's so bulky. Yeah, it's true. And then Altaria, Azumarill still wins, beats Altaria. But he was saying he swapped in Tropius. Yeah, so so I'm trying to review both. Um, but then Tropius yeah, the, the will Tropius definitely win. Swap was for because Altaria was the one. Like a lot of mine were slight losses to Azumarill, and Altaria was the one like big loss. So I tried to swap that for a big win to try and balance out. Yeah. Well, what is Magneton doing on your team that bats He's you just on really favorite? fun. Him and Quagsire is just the two ones that made me want to make a team around them. There's not really much oh. justification beyond that. Oh, well, why not drop Bastion then, since, you know, you're just going for fun. Um, Magneton still does a little bit of Bastion's role, and you can spam those discharges, maybe get in favor, you know, instead of what dropping you, your flying type. What if you threw in, like, Frostlass? Because Frostlass can counter Metacham, and also if you're going for that shield pressure, that Frostlass, Quagsire, Magneton team can work pretty well. Actually, that's really interesting, yeah. I haven't played much with Frostlass. Who would you cut for? Bastiodon? Well, just because you're going for sort of a fun team, and Bastiodon and Magneton will have a, quite a bit of coverage overlap. So yeah. I guess we're not able to necessarily recommend the, the tournament winning team, because that's not really what you're going for. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but you are looking for a somewhat better coverage. Yeah, I mean, I want it to work coverage. as well as it can work. Yeah. No. Right. So cool. I'm not quite as familiar, like with all the Great League matchups, but I know that um, I played against a Quagsire Frostlass Magneton team in Tempest Cup, and that was kind of a pain because they're j- all three are just like so fast and so much shield pressure. Right. 
yeah, it's an interesting. I mean, you you're you're basically deciding which nuke you want to uh, shield. Um, it can really blow up in your face though if you don't get matched up with the right things. Like if you're frostless, for example. Well, maybe frostless in a good. If your magneton is up against like something like a mud bo mud boy, um, uh, the you know. Whiskash is just not going to be shielding any of your moves, so that kind of blows up in your face. It really just depends on the lineup from the other guy. Yeah, now the glass cannons can definitely shatter when it doesn't work, but it's fun when it yeah. does. Um, of the options you posted down below, Haunter is interesting because he just totally walls certain things. Uh, I think you'll have better success with Shadow Ball Hypno, just from what I've been hearing. Or even Alolan Marowak has been interesting. I've added it to my most recently, uh, my but, most uh, recent ha freestyle team. Haunter would fit in with that like glassy high shield pressure option, though. Yeah. I guess if you're doubling down on on glass cannons, then yeah, Haunter would be it. But I'd. Are you necessarily doing that? Are you, or are you just? I mean, that does sound pretty fun. Like, <laughs> yeah. that is the whole point. But it's another ground weakness, so Bastion would definitely have to be out because him and but then him and Magneton yeah. both. I don't know. It's a lot to balance. I'll, I'll play with it and put it again for the next live stream, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Um, Thanks, guys. Mike M F has. Uh, his uh, kingdom team. It's a uh, Bronzong, Lapras with Water Gun, Dragon Pulse, Surf, um, Flygon. It says uh, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Blaziken, Lucario, and Altaria. All of them are standard move sets. So he's basically going for the Ball Core. Uh, for those unfam, well, never mind. Not the Ball Core. Balcor minus Bastidon. So Balcor normally is Bastidon, Altaria, Lucario, and Lapras. He's got all of those except for Bastidon. So that's going to be something to look out for. And in favor of that, he's got Fire and two Flex spots. So, what do you guys think? I kind of like his team right off the bat. I mean, without Bastidon, it seems to function well. Because... Or like um, instead of like substituting Steelix in, yeah, I believe he went for like the Earthquake, or like Bastion on counter with um, Flygon, and then his bulky Steel type is Bronzong. Which I feel like it's a little, I feel like it's a little open to Altaria though, especially because Lapras has Dragon Pulse. Yeah. Oh right. Yep. Especially. Because so Bronzong is his only like counter to Altaria, and it's not. I mean, it's a good counter, but it's not like anywhere near as reliable as say uh, Bastion is, for example. There's definitely matches when uh, Bronzong loses to Altaria, in certain situation. And it's also a little iffy against Charizard. Not too bad, but a little bit. Well, for that same reason, is also iffy to Alolan Marowak, I guess, because of those three you're seeing. Because of Bronzong, Blaziken, and Lucario. But it's. You yeah, know, but Charizard, three three. Charizard Flygon is like kind of toss up. It definitely swings oh, in Charizard's favor. At least from really? the experience that I've had, because Charizard can eat. Uh, two Dragon Claws and Flygon cannot. And while Flygon has faster energy generation, I. Ugh. No, but I think. At least in all the simulations I've ever run and the battles I've ever played in, the upper hand is generally gone to Charizard. So he actually posted in live stream chat and he says he also has a Water Gun Ice Beam Surf Lapras as well. Sub that you know, if you do have one of those, because he's weaker to Altaria. That, yeah, I would recommend that too. He becomes really weak to Lapras then. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the double edged sword of, of sacrificing or running away from the ball court. And then if you look at the next team by Silicatung, it's the exact same thing, except it's Steelix instead of Bronzong, and he's saying he's weak to Lappers also. I mean, it's fairly weak, but I mean, you still have Lucario that beats it. Um, I'm just going to oh, assume that Lapras checks even. it. Actually, I disagree. No, Lapras isn't necessary. He's not weak to Lapras with that team because he's got Bronze on, which most of the time does counter Lapras. He's got Lucario, even though he's got his own Lapras, which will lose against a Dragon Pulse Lapras normally. Um, no, drag, it does fair. Dragon Pulse beats okay. ice, ice Beam in the mirror. I right, understand. But I'm saying so the, the you'd thing be that was sir. The thing that was so say he's up against a Dragon Pulse Lapras. That means his Lapras is going to lose, but that means that his Altaria has a better lap matchup against their Lapras. That's true. So whichever whichever le legacy Lapras they have, he has one of. Lapras or Altaria that has a better matchup as a result. He also says he's got a rank 4 Bastiodon and he's found it at huge risk in practice. Here's the thing about Bastiodon. Um, and I've found uh, I've used Bastiodon but uh, currently I'm using Steelix. I don't see people bringing it as much as I would think. And it happened a lot in Tempest where people had Tropius and wouldn't bring it, especially in Scrimmage. And I think that's because Bastiodon functions similarly to Tropius in that it's there for insurance. Um, you need a counter to Altaria um, that that functions within this this ball core. Um, Uh, AJ, you still there? Anyone? Did the audio just cut out? Can anybody hear me? I think in the background. Yeah. Okay, did you guys get cut uh, cut on audio also or no? <laughs> <laughs> can you can y'all hear me, Gold, or is it just me? AJ, can you hear? Him? I think other, I I think other people now, can't. But you guys just got all cut out. I couldn't hear anything for the last. Out. I couldn't hear anything for the last like thirty seconds. But... <laughs> all right, cool. I can hear everything. I'm where just... did you drop? Where did I drop off for you guys? You said oh, I heard the entire thing, Bruce, and then you just stopped talking. <laughs> I yeah, heard the I'm entire thing. Too. Why am I the only one that can hear everything? <laughs> so the, yeah. So the gist of what I'm saying is, Bastidon functions as insurance, similarly to how Tropius did in Tempest. You will bring it will bring in some situations. Um, but you would, you would just not want to regret not having it in your team, or a Steelix, or you know something that functions similarly to it. And you cut out again. Saying, oh, I hear him. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, at least I'm not crazy. Now it's completely gone. I hear you now. And I hear side network breathing. But yeah, that's the thing though, is like Steelix can kind of fill that role and also covers Bastidon, so that's another option that you could consider, but I think you really want to be bringing one of those two. Right. Okay. All right. So, Lickitung, your team is up right now. 
it is nearly identical. The only change is bronze dong out, steelix in. And uh, were we just making that suggestion so, earlier? Hold on, because Mike was asking about who to swap. Um, so I, I'm not saying definitely bring Bastion on in favor of one of your flex spots. I would say if you, any change needs to be made is the Lapras. Um, you def you kind of need the Ice Beam over uh, the Dragon Pulse in your team just because of the Altaria threat. You can sort of balance out the um, uh, Lapras threat with your Bronzong and, and uh, even Blaziken goes pretty even with it. Uh, and then of course Lucario. I don't think it's going to function as well as the you know classic sort of ball core does. But definitely worth testing. I don't think I would dismiss this as a threat in a tournament. Would you guys agree to that? Uh, right. Yeah. This is a team. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. This seems well balanced. Not something that I would want to go up against because there aren't any glaring weaknesses in it. Well, besides um, the Altaria one. Right, but Altaria gets what one matchup in, and it's, it's not like it's going to go through two Pokemon unless it gets a hold of Flygon and. Uh, um, Either Flygon, what is the Pokemon I'm looking at right now? Blaziken or Lucario. It's not going to go through more than one Pokemon. Right, that's true. Yep. So it says he's been very successful against Ball Team. Awesome. Yeah. Report back to us, and maybe uh, next week we'll be able to uh, dissect it a little bit better. Um, the next team, uh, Beagle. Sorry, just uh, my friend sent me his team. He's not on Discord, so I'm actually just posting that right now. I just need to swap out to the next team after that, which is... Wait, did we skip Silicaton? Silicaton. So... No, Silicaton's on stream oh. right now. I said it's the exact same as the past one, except it's uh, Steelix instead of Bronze on. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Wait to Lapras. Here. Uh, I don't know what your... Uh, Lapras uh, charge move is, but even if it has Dragon Pulse, it's Ice Beam. Pretty... Ice Beam? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then, then it's especially weak to Lapras because your only counter is Lucario. And then you have Blaziken as a check, uh, but Steelix is weak to it, Flygon is weak to it, Altaria is situationally weak to it. And then, of course, your Lapras goes even to losing if it has a Dragon Pulse. So my thought would be maybe drop Blaziken for Bronzong. Perhaps, yeah. Or... Hmm. Yeah, it seems so does fine against Bastiodon if you swap out the, the Blaziken for Bronzong. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Because, yeah, if you swap out Blaziken for Bronzong, that was one of the teams I was uh, looking at the other night um, as a possibility. Yeah. The interesting thing about Steelix and Bronzong is they have different matchups. Like, for example, the Lapras matchup. But they still work as a counter to Altaria. So it's a pretty popular duo for people not running Bastidon. Um and you know being able to still keep Altaria in, in check. Hmm. I don't know about whether it's Blaziken or Flygon that I drop. Probably Blaziken. I think I agree with you guys. And just not run a fire. Hmm. Wouldn't he be kind of weak? Then he would be really weak to Lucario. Is, yeah. yeah, I was just looking at that because I was then I was thinking, what are the Cario counters? It just spins in circles. <laughs> it's like yeah. for this cup, I keep uh, there's like seven well, Pokemon I'm like really holding on to, and I can't pick between the last two. Well, Bronzong and Lucario are pretty even, right? I mean, a boost like, Lucario could just shred right through it. Shadow Ball will shred right through it. Does he really yeah. need both Flygon and Steelix? 
They're That's, totally that was. Different. What do you mean? We both lose to Lapras. One loses to Altaria. Both generally lose to Lucario. Well, Flygon kind of goes even with Lucario. Steelix always loses to Lucario. Uh, Steelix is, loses to Lapras. Bronzong normally tends to counter Lapras. Um, he's not right, think the a hard counter. I think the question was, could he drop Flygon in favor of Bronzong? Yeah, that's, yeah, probably. Because you'd flip the matches that you normally have. And I think you'd still be okay against uh, Bastidon because you have uh, Blaziken and you have Lucario in there. You have your own Lapras. And you have Steelix. So be, yeah, and Steelix. You'd be slightly susceptible to Charizard because then Altaria and Lapras are his biggest checks with Blaziken, Steelix, and Lucario, and Bronzong. Bronzong generally goes even, but... Charizard would be in a favorable matchup against this team then. I mean, that's just something to consider. Not necessarily game-breaking flaw, but... Okay, I think... Uh, I think it's a pretty good team, though. Otherwise, I mean, it's an interesting... Sort of way to 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 not run Bastion on. I'm I'm kind of a big fan of Steelix this time around, and I find myself using Steelix more than I would be using Bastion on. Never thought I'd hear you say that. that. Well, in this cup, like I said, you know, Bastion on, you're you're having it more as a presence, and you're not necessarily you may or may not bring it, but Steelix. You're very often bringing it because it has, uh, of, I guess, multiple roles other than just uh, demolishing Altaria, right? Yeah. But I do miss it when there's Charizard. I'll say that. Uh, we have Joe Powell 30. Um, he's got Lapras. His team's already up on stream for those of you watching over there. Whose team? Joel Powell. Joe Powell. Yeah. Joe Powell. Okay. Yeah. So he's got uh, Lapras, Lucario, Bronzong, Charizard, Altaria, and Flygon. He's trying to decide if he should keep Bronzong or switch it to Steelix. Hmm. Well, probably yeah. I think if he switches to Steelix, he's a pretty vulnerable to Lapras. Huh. I wonder if he has a... Well, if he had a Bastion on this, would be a pretty, pretty classic team. Seeing this a lot. He's also somewhat weak to Altaria. Yeah. With or without Steelix. I mean, this. I think this is similar to the last team where maybe the suggestion would be drop Flygon in favor of Steelix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You might just generally see the trend as us um, modifying certain teams so that it ends up being something akin to like Steelix or Bastion, Altaria, Lucario, and Lapras or Dragonair. Um, that's just the kind of basic ball core, and then you have two spots for flex, and they typically tend to be a uh, solid Lucario counter, and then something that's covering the rest of your weaknesses. <clears throat> Bronzong does not, unfortunately, fulfill that role that Steelix and Bastion tends to fill. So, at least not by itself. So what would you guys recommend? You would say drop Flygon for Steelix? Yeah, that's what I would say. Cause it's I kind of like, you know, like the team as is. It's not bad. 
So you wouldn't think that that team, the way it is, um, is a little bit open to well, Altaria, for example? I mean, I, I, I agree that it's open to Altaria. But even if an opponent brings Altaria in every single match, you're going to have your own Altaria to check it. Hopefully the Lapras has Ice Beam in this case. Bronzong is going to go just about even with it. Charizard and Flygon are both tracking, packing Dragon Claw. So they're going to lose, certainly, to Altaria, but not without at least taking it down to 50% health, depending on how aggressively the Altaria wants to shield. And then the Cario is really its biggest weakness against Altaria. Altaria. For, so for a team without Steelix that is susceptible to Altaria, I don't know that it's as susceptible as it's seems right off the bat, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't know. I think I would rather be... Uh, I'm not sure. I think I feel more comfortable with uh, the Steelix for Flygon swap than I would recommending this team specifically. I'd run well, Steelix here's over, the... over Bronzong, though, if you rather keep Flygon in for more Dragon Claw Shield pressure, because that's probably one of the best uses of Flygon in this cup, aside from a Lucario counter. It's just the spam ability of Dragon Claw, it helps. Stream. He was considering putting Stone Edge on Flygon and adding Steelix with Quake. Um, so, what are you considering swapping in Steelix for? That's my question. Is if, if it's not Flygon, no Bronzong. So he's thinking about swapping Steelix for Bronzong. Yeah, that's what I suggested also just now. But then the audio cut out, so I didn't hear your answers. Oh, sorry. Um. I mean, you. The thing is, I, I think Steelix, Bronzong, the only thing in common they have is that they're a decent counter to Altaria, right? Um, Steelix loses to Lucario, Bronzong goes about even. Um, Bronzong and Charizard is an interesting matchup, but Steelix uh, very, very rarely loses to or uh, wins. Charizard, I think. Uh, um, Bronzong beats uh, Blaziken, where Steelix loses. Yeah, it's, it, they're sort of inverted, but. And then Steelix sort of beats Alolan and Marowak, where Bronzong, I believe, loses that one. Yeah. I mean, Faint Attack Bronzong doesn't lose, but Faint Attack Bronzong is just trash. Please, no, yeah. do not run that. <laughs> What oh. is this? The new is this the new Snow Bomber? Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. No, I I would feel pretty comfortable with the Flygon for Steelix swap. I think generally speaking, teams without Bastion are gonna favor to having two. I don't even know if soft counters is the word, but softer counters to Altaria than uh, Bastion. And so you have a little bit of flexibility in your team and you're uh, choosing your three. But then again, I don't know that I would recommend Stone Edge, though. Flygon. You guys want to move on? Yeah. Sure. I say we yeah, do that's, one. That Stone Edge comment I can definitely agree with. Yeah. Okay, nice. I just don't think it adds that much and you're sacrificing either Dragon Claw or Earthquake, which I think are both a lot more important. Alright, next team is Pass M's team. It's already on stream. Water Gun Surf Lapras. He also has an Ice Shard Ice Beam Lapras. And then he's deciding between Bronzong and Flygon in his flex spot. So I'm assuming if it's Water Gun Surf, that means it's not Legacy. Which means you can actually get by with Blizzard for the odd chance that you do use Blizzard against stuff. Such as Altaria, basically. Because, like Tempest. Lapras is 90% Surf, 10% charge, other charge move.
Okay. Uh, he says he's deciding between Bronzong and Flygon. Wait, did you guys not hear anything I just said? Or you did? No, yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I was just reiterating. Didn't, that. didn't have any additional comments. Ah. I'm just looking at this team because he's got oh, no. his, he's got the basic ball core, um, and he's I guess he's debating between water gun and surf or the ice shard. They're totally different. Uh, I think if you're gonna run ice shard on on Lapras. You basically need to run, or or probably should run, uh, like something like Dragonair that fills that Lapras role, and maybe you're you're baiting someone into. Uh, what would you even be baiting, Lucario? I guess, at that point. Opposing Lapras, big time. Yeah. Since any water gun variant is going to take over the ice shard variant. You're also beating yeah. Mastodon even harder. Same thing for Dragonair. Uh, well, Dragonair beats Bastiodon. Oh, I thought oh. you were talking about the Ice Shard Lapras variant. Yeah. Well, yeah, Sorry, Ice Shard would lose to Bastiodon. Yeah, Ice Shard and loses I, handily. And Ice Shard also loses to Blaziken. And Charizard, I think. No. Ice Shard beats no, Charizard. Ice Shard. Yeah, Ice Shard still beats Charizard. Because we saw that in Tempest. Right, yeah. The question is, deciding between Bronzong and Flygon. Well, here's the deal. Bronzong tends to beat Lapras, Flygon tends to lose. Um, Bronzong and Flygon go even, about even, with uh, Lucario. Bronzong handily loses to, like, say, Marowak, and then uh, Flygon wins, so it's almost like they're completely inverted in most of their matchups. The biggest exception is Bronzong functions as a hard counter to Blaziken. But I don't think your team is necessarily weak to Blaziken. It? You got no, Charizard and Altaria, and then Lapras goes about even. I think he formed his ball core and then he had his Lapras and he was looking at it and he's like, man, I only got water gun surf. And he doesn't have Dragon Pulse or Ice Beam. So immediately, I mean, that makes you think, oh man, I'm weak to both Lapras and Altaria. Like, what covers both of them? Um, so I think that he threw Bronzong in there to cover his weaknesses fairly well and then just added Charizard as his hard Lucario counter. Yeah. It's not and a bad thing. I think it it's seems solid. reasonably well balanced, and this is a team that I've considered running myself. Yeah. What were you going to say? Is... Yes, sorry. I cut someone off. He says with Bronzong, he feels weak to, weak to Bastiodon. Um, well, you still have. Lapras and uh, Lucario and your own Bastiodon. Yes, Charizard and Altaria are hard countered by Bastiodon. There's no way around that. But if, if you ever really play out the match with Bronzong against Bastiodon, um, I think your opponent will tend to not shield, at which case you could just do the better damage per energy move, which is Flash Cannon. And it's not that much more charged than Heavy Slam anyway. You just spam Flash Cannon, and two Flash Cannons just basically neutralizes Bastiodon as a threat, and you've neutralized a threat that is supposed to be a counter. So that's pretty good. Yep. Yeah, AJ did that to me the other day. I was kind of frustrated. <laughs> yeah. Now... They could shield once, and your the uh, the opponent's pass. You know, um, we'll we'll still have a, a bit of HP left, um, but you definitely get it too. So so they can't afford to to not shield at all. So at, at the very least, you're going to be spending one of their shields. And a lot of people don't know that, so you could capitalize on that. So. You guys have anything else to add? 
No? Uh, well, your team's up next. And your yep. team's already. Yours. Team. It's already on Best the live stream. Fasto, yeah. I'll let you introduce this team because it's yours. Um. All right. So I was going for a team without Ste or without Bastide on, um, just to play around with the idea, um, because. Um, like I've kind of said before, I kind of like the fact that Steelix has similar coverage and beats Bastide on itself. Um, so I kind of started there, but then took the other three from the ball core because those are just all so good. Um, I wouldn't want to drop any of them. Um, and then I kind of got into other coverage. Um, and I've just found Alolan Marowak kind of a pain to play against. Um, it seems pretty good to me, so I wanted to include that. And then um, I liked Bronzong for um, the fact that it's another Altaria counter um, that also can go even with Lapras, um, as well as Lucario, potentially. Yeah. So, I'm liking this team so far. Uh, I've been using it uh, a fair amount. Um, yeah, I was about to say, AJ's going to really like this team. <laughs> yeah. I'm not necessarily convinced like that's like the, the best team, you know. Uh, I've been trying a lot of different things out. I would say, of course, your weakness to... This is somewhat of a weakness to Charizard. I, I don't necessarily think it's like a glaring weakness. Um, but you can capitalize on it because not so many people realize that Marowak tends to beat Charizard. And uh, you don't even need to shield bait. You can just do two Shadow Balls and you could very reliably beat Charizard. Um, it's actually riskier to shield bait because if they don't shield, if they don't shield the uh, Bone Club then you're probably going to lose. So, Gosh. take that for what it's worth. One thing I'm thinking, though, is that team looks fairly weak to Flygon specifically. Yeah, so, this is where I ran into trouble, is because uh, Haller Ash ran Ballcore Flygon Charizard. And so, he... Well, you can... You can explain, but... but 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 the combination of those two um, put me in a world of hurt. So. Is he going to? I think I just got. I think I just got sick of steam rolling, being steamrolled by um, Steelix. So I was like, "All right, fine. If you're going to earthquake me, I'm just going to earthquake you back faster." Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's. Uh, I mean, honestly, between my. Flex spots. The, the the Pokemon that I'm arguing with the most are a little Marowak, and I don't even have one. It's just the fact that I have to play against it is so irritating. Bronzong, Flygon, and Charizard. I'm fighting with those four for my two flex spots, and I don't know which route to go. Oh, and Blaziken. Just to top that off. I'm doing, um, I'm doing the same, but I'm adding Fortress in as a sixth and Laron as a seventh for fun. <laughs> I mean, again, it's it's not a team that I enjoy playing against. It's just a team that does well, and that's the whole point of this, right? The eventual doing well potential regionals. Yeah. And also, I'll say Altaria. Uh, well, you're running Ice Beam, and I've been mostly running Dragon Pulse. I'm actually... Uh, I just second moved my ice beam one so i'll be kind of switching back and forth between them um it's a it's a trade-off you know if you don't have dragon pulse then you're kind of relying on bronzong and lucario to do the job uh if you don't have ice beam then you're relying on bronzong and steelix to take care of altaria so, they're not right. as reliable as one would think.
anyway, that's my that's my feedback so far. I've been doing okay with it though. Yeah, I just threw this together as a potential Steelix team, but I'm also looking at some ball core teams too. I haven't really made up my mind for sure if I want to go the Steelix route or the Bastidon route, so I'm kind of playing with the idea of both and trying to come up with a couple of possible teams that would work either way. He said, one question was, what do you normally pair with Alolan Marowak? Within that That's team? a question for you all. I have... I don't have much experience with it at all, or any experience, actually. I mean, well, I mean, that's going to have to be you, AJ, because as you can see here, I don't have the whole team fleshed out yet, because my Alolan Marowak's not powered up, and I don't have Bronze on yet. So, Mamilio AU was asking that question. I I think Alolan Marowak actually pairs well um, with anything in this team, depending on what you are running against. A sort of good neutral coverage um, balance core of three that I've used out of this is Alolan Marowak, Lucario, and Lapras. And you cover a lot of your bases. Of course, you wouldn't run that necessarily against Alparia. Um, but if you suspect that the other guy isn't going to be running Alparia, then it's a pretty good team. And you can still sort of check the Altaria threat with your own Lapras. But it's been doing okay for me. Altaria does not really like to eat... Yeah, Altaria does not like to eat two Shadow Balls either. And that's not a fun bluffing game to be on the receiving end of either. Yeah, and you have that Shadow Ball threat from both Lucario and Alone Marowak. Yeah. Yeah. And that sh- playing that shield bait game against a lone Marowak is really annoying because you don't want to eat a shadow ball, but it feels really bad if you shield a bone club. I honestly don't know which yeah. one feels worse. <laughs> it's pretty but satisfying sh- to, to charge it up, especially with Hex, because it charges up so fast. You can you can just basically spam uh, bone club and it and it still does a quite a bit of damage. And if you're able to get in a shield uh, from your opponent, then that's all the better. But Shadow Ball is amazing. What I don't like, the downsides of Alolan Marowak, is you basically get nuked with uh, Lucario's Shadow Ball. So you just have to have a good read on your opponent. And um, it just it, it cannot survive that uh, that Shadow Ball from it. Right. So, for whatever. But I mean, worth. neither 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 can Charizard. So. Yeah. Another thing with this team, I've been using Bronzong as a bit of a safe switch a lot. Um. And I, I, you know, having Marowak there as a Lucario counter has been has been pretty good. We'll see. We'll see how. We'll see what I end up using. But, uh, I mean, the other reason that I liked Marowak is the fact that it can beat both Blaziken and Charizard. Yeah. King of the fire types and beats. Wait, there was a third fire type in there somewhere. Torgal? Probably. Camera up. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of AJ's infographic. No, no, no. Yeah, it was on there. No, I think you're right. It was probably Torkoal. Yeah, it's Torkoal. Yeah, those were the four. Those were the four. So Torkoal is the only one I think it loses to, just because it can get nuked by the Earthquake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Torkoal has got uh, some weird coverage within the fire group. But I just don't really see Torkoal being used that much, to be honest. Maybe in India. Mm. Sure, but... Um, one question we got on the stream was Eyang88 was asking about Jinx. Is it just not a solid PvP factor? Yeah, unfortunately, Jinx is way too glassy, and his or her um, uh, coverage doesn't really help within this uh, cup. So, like, Lucario is a really glassy uh, choice, but he's got that fighting uh, uh, coverage that nobody else can really cover other than maybe Blaziken. So, uh, unfortunately, Jinx is just not a good choice overall. Although in what could potentially be an April Cup or a future Psychic-related Cup, 
if you manage to actually have a jinx with the legacy pound you do neutral damage with your quick move instead of resist it against the dark types or bug types that'll be super effective against you isn't pound one of the worst moves in pvp though yeah pound's not that good it, it doesn't is. have like horrible energy generation yeah hey if you want a psychic type with different uh fast move just use shadow claw mew that's that's yeah. the psychic cup though that's a whole nother yeah yeah ball of fun whole nother ball game He's not good yeah, for just... freestyle, and he's not good for kingdom. I, I think that answers yep. the gist of it. And um, um, Before we go to the next team, I just want to give a shout-out to Go Teach, good friend of mine. Uh, she has her own stream, and uh, she just dropped in. Shout-out to oh, her. Oh, cool. Hey, yeah. Go Teach. Um, um, also, shout-out to Ricky Bot, who posted a little while back. Um he actually made international news for a certain reason, which I'm not going to say on stream, but you can probably look it up a little later. Um, but he's actually back into Pokemon Go now, which is good. But he actually had a little scare a while back that turned him away from the game, but now that he's back in PvP, he said he ran the same team as uh, somebody else a little earlier, which was basically the ball core. Minus Bastiodon with Bronzong and uh, Alolan Marowak in there instead. So he wanted to hear advice on that as well when we were covering it. Now, cool. On to the next team, one of our local content creators. Yeah, so Naruto90 uh, is running Blaziken, Bastiodon, Lucario, uh, Lapras, Altaria, and Bronzong. I think this, this sucks. Basic. That's just not good. No, it's not good. <laughs> Y'all are hard. It's awful. It's awful. Oh, he just left the call. Uh, he was just in here. Oh, now he's back. Yeah. Hey, so come, on the now, game. come on It's terrible. The game. Just, just quit, Pogo. Uh, yeah, you, you know what? <laughs> you use that bronze, that bronze ore or a Kingdom Cup challenge. Use everything one evolution stage below. Let's see how that goes. And then tell us how that goes. All right, so you have to unevolve your Lapras. <laughs> I mean, it was possible 22 years ago, but that's a different story. All right, so let's see. He has the ball core here, and then he's opting for Blaziken and Bronzong as the other two slots. No, Bronzor. Oh, you're right. Use Bronzor. Don't evolve it. It's Honestly. the hidden gem. Honestly, it's pretty solid. I mean, I'm not sure how many mud shots your Flygon Bronzor can take, but that's about it. There's not really much to change with this team. That's true. I guess Flygon would beat um, Bronzong slash Bronzor and Blaziken and Bastiodon, and Bastiodon, and it could, um, and can put some. It can chunk Lucario. Alright, stop reading my mind. You said the exact same sentences. That's yeah, Char Charizard is not something it really wants to see either. Yeah, no. Uh, well, it has Bastiodon and Lapras mm. to handle it, and Altaria. And Altaria. Yeah. I think I think he's fine against Charizard. But Flygon would be a little iffier. I was considering oh. running the same team, and I was kind of worried about Bronzong. Hmm. That's true, actually. Bronzong would be a little bit of a pain to play against here. I think what he could do Oh, an opposing Bronzong? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe swap out Blaziken for Charizard. That way you potentially eliminate the Bronzong weakness. You kind of get rid of the Flagon weakness, at least marginally. And you also marginally get rid of um, another... Uh, I don't remember, actually. Never mind. The I mean, I know that he has one, though, and I know that he plays here. with it. Yeah. What do you say? Sorry, I cut off Averill. What did you say, Averill? The toss-up with that, is, like, which is basically what I'm going to be running also, is that it's weak to Bastiodon. Right. That's true, too. Because I know that he has a Charizard, and so he had to have made a conscious decision to bench Charizard for uh, Blaze again. Yeah, if you go Charizard, it is a little iffy against Bastiodon at that point. 
because Charizard loses to Bastidon, Altaria loses to Bastidon, um, Bronzong loses to, um, then you have a Bastidon mirror, and then you have Lapras that goes fairly even. Does the low and Marowak do any better as the fire roll? Like in terms of meshing with that team? Because that would help with the bronze uh, issue. But I don't think that helps much in Bastion, yeah. Well, it gives you another net resistance to Lucario and Counter. And takes out Charizard. Yep. Ultimately, though, I mean, if you're running into a team where its weakness is itself, I. I mean, I think you're at a pretty good point. Yeah, I think this is pretty solid as is. I don't know if I'd say to change anything. Make sure you give a second move to Bronzo or max that out and use that at 500 and whatever <laughs> CP, though. That's the only thing. 500 and whatever. <laughs> I guess, Aravel, same thing for you. Oh. Max out that shield on and use it as is. Don't evolve it. Absolutely. Alright, so your team is on stream right now also. Basically the exact same thing. Aside from... Yeah, it was already pretty much covered when you did PASM. Have you uh, used it extensively? No, I haven't had any practice, unfortunately. I mean, he's obviously been oh, using that shield on a lot. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. <laughs> like, of course, no, he has that he practiced with. It. Well, you can bluff. You have to be super rude. <laughs> I mean, you could bluff a uh, uh, Bassid on quite well. I've seen people do that. Well, um, I, mean, I was just wondering if he used the other ones. I haven't had a chance to get any practice in, unfortunately. I wish I could. Honestly, this looks like this is kind of shaping up to be the meta itself, is the ball core. Bronzong in your primary flex spot, and then either Charizard, Blazekin, or Owen, Marowak, whichever one you want to use. Whatever you or Flygon. Like. Yeah. Or I th Flygon. Yeah, I think Flygon, I think Flygon or Bronzor in one spot, and then one of the three fires in the other spot. Yeah. Yeah. That's been generally the trend. Although there's been some interesting teams without fire types. And there's been some interesting teams um, with three flex spots in favor of dropping. What was it? Bastion? I forget what, what yeah, they wanted Bastion to drop. Don't over steal, uh, it usually seems like over the first thing to get cut. I mean, honestly, yeah. you can also potentially cut Altaria for another dragon type. Maybe Dragon Air to get rid of that double ice weakness. But that's more of a risky cut. Yeah, because Altaria that? gives you that Lucario coverage and uh, beats the other dragons. What was the moveset on this Lapras? A water gun ice beam surf. Yeah. It's solid. Yep. Um, you'll be relying on... Well, I guess... No, never mind. You get Bronzong and uh, Bastion to cover for Altaria. Or... Uh, um, He's not using Bastion, he's using Shield on. Yeah. Come on, Andrew, get it right. Uh, I got this flipped. So, it's the Lapras that you'd be concerned about, but you have Lucario and uh, Bronzong to deal with it. There you go. Um, yep. Alright, yeah. this is Sark Techies team. It's. Uh, where is it? Bastion. Castle Face. Bastiodon, Lapras, Melmetal, Alolan, Marowak, Flygon, and Lucario. Although his Lapras has Ice Shard, Ice Beam, Surf. Right. So he's specializing as a dragon counter. And his the rest of it has standard moves. Yep. So, so if you're gonna run Lapras as a dragon specialist why would you have two more dragon counter? It would be my I question. Agree, I agree. Lucario has the potential to run through his entire team. Yeah. Aside from because Oof. yeah. Well, because if Lucario lands a Shadow Ball and a Lolan Marowak, that's gone. 
and then Lucario can beat everything else. I'm just not a fan of the double steel unless one of the steel types is bronze on. I just think between Bastiodon, Melmetal, and Steelix, there's too much overlap between those three. Yeah. That's a that's a glaring weakness. Yeah. Um you can run Lapras with a shard um it's no it does it just won't fill the role of your water your water gun surf lap um it hard counters altaria say um and uh, dragon air for that matter but and flygon but uh yeah i'm not so sure that you need mel metal and bastion in there you need another counter to Lucario, I think. Yeah, I agree. So what that would be, uh, maybe... Uh, what if you ended up going well, ball court to... and swapped out Melmetal for Altaria? And then his flex spots were Flygon and a little bit well, more like... How would you feel about know. that team then? I, That's I a little weak he's... to Lapras, though. And Bastion. So now his Bastion is so, you know, in his team, the only things that counter Bastion are Lucario and Flygon, right? His Lapras doesn't stand a chance. Oh, that's right. Mount Metal doesn't actually beat it, and Marowak doesn't beat it either. So I would probably suggest dropping Mount Metal. And adding maybe Blaziken or yeah, Blaziken might do the job. Yeah, probably Blaziken because that helps against Lucario and Bastiodon. Yeah, might be interesting. But then or Dragonair. <laughs> what about Dragonair? Dragon. Well, Dragonair loses Dragon. to Lucario too. You're talking Dragonair and play some metal. Or in place of Marowak. No, Dragonair instead yeah. of Metal. Yeah. The biggest problem I see with Blaziken is I feel like Lapras poses a problem then. Yeah. Because Waterbin That's... Lapras beats his Lapras and it's going to beat Flygon, uh, yeah. Marowak, and Blaziken. And can go even with Bastiodon. Yeah. This is, this is the main problem that I'm seeing with Ice Shard Lapras is that it, in a vacuum it serves a role but in the context of a team it's very hard to put it anywhere because you start to sacrifice so many matchups that the rest of your team has to make up for it I, I have yet to see a good a, de a really good ice shard lapras team um, that's balanced against everything else I've tried I to make it work as well I just couldn't I think if you're going with, with Ice Shard Lapras, you're going to have to maybe stray off of that ball court and do something funky. Because ball court kind of relies on that Water Gun Lapras. Right. Alright, next team is Sinoa's team. So, Lapras, Charizard, Altaria, Lucario, Bastiodonna, and Steelix. This seems very similar. We've already covered this team a couple times, I think. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I think you really got to pick here between Bastiodon and Steelix. Okay. I just, there's too much overlap. And what about um, putting a Blaziken in there? Hmm... In for like one of the two that you replace? Yeah, or just any of them, honestly. I mean, you could, but then you have two fire types, and I'm just not sure how great that is. Okay. Especially then you'd be this, really open to Lapras so and yeah. Altaria. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you want to run Blaziken, you'd have to drop Charizard. That's the route I would go as well. 
I would certainly not pick both Blaziken and Charizard on my team. Would you guys have a preference over which? Honestly which of Blaziken and Charizard? It, it depends yeah. somewhat on... It's going to depend if you're picking Steelix or Bastidon. And then it's also going to depend what other Mon you're putting in place there. Okay. The, the thing with um, Kingdom is I don't think it's quite as cookie cutter as some of the other cups where with Kingdom it like yeah you, you can go with the ball core but you also don't have to and then regardless like what there's no like universal best pick because it really depends on the coverage of the rest of your team yeah I mean the safest pick in all of Kingdom is Lucario but even still that can be exploited it's not really a required pick it's more the generalization it's nice to have in a core of three or in a team of six team, team of six team i think six primarily but core I... of three having fighting type yeah. or fighting type move is just vital in general to most of kingdom anyways have you guys mm -hmm. seen any team uh without a lucario that's viable um, i don't think so viable no but <laughs> the next i i have actually my friend so we can discuss that a bit Oh, I want to talk to CY Noah while he's on air a okay. little bit. Yeah, yeah. We're, we don't need to rush. To help him out. Uh, of the teams that I have seen run without Lucario, while we're on this tangent, I've seen one of my scrim partners, who I'll opt to leave nameless for now, run it without Lucario, but it's sub Studi and Blaziken. And it's actually posed somewhat of a problem until I figured out that they didn't have Lucario, that I could just abuse him with Bastiodon. That scrim partner wasn't me, right? Because I did the same thing to you. No, it wasn't you. It wasn't you. It was somebody else. Okay. Mm. I say, so again, pick between Bastion and Steelix. Choose which one you like better. Mm -hmm. um, what about um, Stone Edge Blaziken? Because I might be getting one from one of my friends. Oh, flex that. Absolutely. Just cut Charizard if you have a Stone Edge Blaziken. Yeah. Below right. 1,500? Yeah. Hmm? It's around you 1,200, might... he said right now. That's insane. You might be the only person. Where do you live? In Los Angeles. Okay, so I'm non-revving there, and I'm going to uh, <laughs> trump whatever you're giving, and we'll see, we'll see who gets the trade. <laughs> Your thing is probably better than mine. He just wants a shiny Absol. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Don't it's tell anybody good. about this trade until you make it. <laughs> All right. I mean, the nice, just, um, that would be one wild card to hold really close um, to you because nobody's going to be expecting that. Uh, it's just yeah. so, mm. it was so rare. Four hours. And most people yeah. already maxed theirs or evolved their highest Torchix that day. Yeah. You might actually again, be the only one one with it. You so. know, you're the only one that I've seen mention it within the Discord. Yeah, I mentioned it like a little while back, but just to... And then I was like waiting for a confirmation. And then he said that he had a couple left on some alts, so... just He said he could left? trade it away, I don't know. A couple? Yeah, he went all out on... He said he used, like, all his rare candies at the time. So and Brave Bird... Stone Edge? Yeah, for, for Stone Edge. What? It's insane. Yeah, pretty crazy. So that means AJ are changing your weekend plans? Yeah, I'll just fly <laughs> over. Yeah. So I haven't actually played with Stone Edge, obviously. But looking at the simulations, it comes out at the same time that Brave Bird does. Even then, you're only going to get one charge move off, likely. Yeah. To play as it can. The it's Stone Edge comes like out an... pretty quick. Yeah, it's not <laughs> it's just going to be like an card. epic. Uh, it's going to be like an epic moment, like when you Solar Beam uh, Tentacruel uh, with Venusaur. Yeah. If you ever done that in Twilight, it's just so satisfying. So. <laughs> um, 
and nobody's expecting Frenzy Plant Solar Beam, so it's like the same thing in that nobody would be expecting Stone Edge. Does Stone Edge nuke Altaria? Does it? I think it brings it down to like 80, uh, 20% or so. Yeah, I don't think it nukes it, but it brings it pretty, pretty damn low. I mean, it does nuke yeah, Charizard, so there's that. Oh, that's not really a hard thing to do. Yeah, Bright Bird would do that anyways. Yeah. So if they swapped yeah. in Altaria into your Stone Edge Blades again, you could get off the of Stone Edge, and then you would come out to a quick move tie, essentially, with Oh, what Altaria. about Lapras? How does uh, Stone Edge do against oh, yeah. Lapras? I'll send it right now. I think we're countered. I think it doesn't matter. Yeah, Lapras shields pretty much regardless. But I, I've been in no-shield situations where I've had time to get off a of Brave Bird and get slap wrist before they get to a surf. Just like weird endgame scenarios. So it would certainly have you, utility. Do you guys have a sim pulled up? Yeah, I have one pulled up right here. So put... Uh, give like 80 energy to Blaziken with Stone 80, Edge. Jesus. What? Well, then you just, just use Focus Blast. It wouldn't matter, but I mean... I, I just want to yeah. see what Stone Edge would do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, with 80 energy, he still uses uh, Focus Blast. Just no, just don't give him Focus Blast. Just only I don't, give him, don't give him Focus Blast at all? Hey, hey AJ, I did, I did it. Uh, it takes 78% uh, of Lap's health. Hmm. Yeah, as opposed to Focus Blast. Yeah, so I don't know. I, it's not game-breaking. We certainly simmed it in the beginning. And we just sort of decided that between its rarity and... Um, it, it doesn't have the huge impact on the meta, but it's so rare that people won't be expecting it. So that's cool. Cool. All right, good to know then. And then, if you want to actually have him trade you as many of his uh, Stone Edge Blaze skins as possible, that way nobody else has them. <laughs> <laughs> Dry them all up. That's so cool. He actually, he said he um, he had two under fifteen hundred, but one was for sure gonna be under fifteen hundred, like with a trade. So that's I so mean, crazy. I could, cause he doesn't PVP, so like I could ask him about like potentially trading to like I don't know one of you guys on the server if it's like of interest, especially. But oh yeah, know, absolutely. Take, like, ultra There'd be a stuff. bidding war. If, it, if the word gets out, there'd be a bidding war. And uh, the, did you have? There was a post on Reddit not too long ago where some guy was like, "This is before PvP," mm. and he was offering a Stone Edge Blaziken for the for the person who was able to give them a, a lucky Shadow Ball Mewtwo. Hmm. So it was like. And, they, and people still did that. So, like, he got several Mewtwo until one of them went lucky, and then he gave him the Blaziken. Like, that's how Dang. popular it is. I don't. I don't think he realizes that. Then I think he could probably ask for way more from me. Then. Wait, what was he asking yeah. for? I missed that. Shiny Absol. Yeah, tell him he. You could have he could have asked you for way more after you get the first one at least. Make sure it's under four hundred first, and then tell him that. Right. Trade then, for both and transfer one. And then as a consolation oh, prize, trade him a regular Absol, so that the shiny won't be lonely. Okay, so um, I guess we can move on. A beagle. Yeah, it's, your team. it's not my team. It's actually my friend's team. He's not um, too too in depth in pe like too um, experienced with PvP and everything. So he went through what he had available and just sent out like told me to post this on his behalf because he just he's not really familiar with Discord either. So he doesn't have Bastiodon. He hasn't even hatched a Ryolu yet. So Lucario's out of the question. Oh, so that's why I told him Steelix. It's, uh, it's like a replacement kind of thing. That Alolan Marowak we actually duoed it earlier today on our break between classes, and then just traded it to each other. I think that's um, you know, rank like four hundred or so. It's 
not a bad Alolan Marowak either. Um, so the do you, do you have a post on the Twitch stream? Because for those listening, yeah, I'm um, in the process of pulling up the rest of them. Okay, because we're looking at Alolan Marowak, uh, Blaziken, Steelix, and then Triple Dragon with Altaria. Um, Dragonair, Flygon, Flygon, and yeah, Dragonair. I mean, immediately, first glance, Lapras wins. Yeah, yeah, I told him about Lapras. Hands down against every single one of these Pokemon. Yep, I told him about Yeah, Lapras. so does he have a Lapras? Uh, he has to check, but he should have one. If not, I'm going to trade him one of mine. Does he have a Kingdra? I... <laughs> Quadruple Dragon? I don't think so. Well, no, drop a Dragon in favor of Kingdra, because if... And if opposing Lapras is running Ice Beam, then Kingdra can beat it. I'm just trying to find like some Lapras counters in here since he doesn't have Lucario. I mean, I could tell him to run Bronzong instead. I think you should. I also probably drop one of the dragons. Let's see if he. So Steelix and Blaziken, I think he has to run. Um, and I think you want to run Altaria. Um, so he's got this. He, he, he I, I just jumped in. Does he have a Lapras or no? Uh, he's checking for one. If not, I'm probably going to trade him one of my spare ones, but it wouldn't be Legacy. So this is actually one of the teams that I've been toying with. Um, what? With the, yeah. So, but, but hear me out, right? So the. The, it, the idea is a, a ball core without a Lapras or a Lucario and stress testing that. So, whether and without a Bastidon. Action. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that too. Um, so it's uh, just A. So it's... <laughs> but but <laughs> you're, you're, you're attempting to fulfill the role of Lucario with Blaziken, Lapras with Dragonair. And Bastion with Steelix. Um, the problem is Altaria. So you yeah. definitely do need a Bronzong in there. And the other thing about this would be Lapras. Lapras but which Bronzong yeah. also or, helps or with. Or also. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, not as much with Dragonair there and Altaria, but Flygon still does quite a bit of damage to that team. So would um, would Bronzong slot in? So if we're slotting in Bronzong, would that go in for um, Marowak oh, well, or Marowak. for Flygon? Yeah. I'd say Bronzong. Oh, oh, right, right, right. And then Flygon out for something else. What would something else be though? Lapras. But if he, if he doesn't have legacy Lapras, then I think Lapras, if it comes in, would go in the Dragonair spot. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, yeah non legacy Lapras doesn't really solve his Altaria problem. Altaria, I. Altaria. It's late. <laughs> <laughs> We've come a long way. I think Bronzong is solid. So, Absolutely. It, with Lapras, the, Dragonair is kind of 50 50 against Lapras, right? Unless it's running Ice Shard. Um, yeah, I think so. Because it resists Water Gun. I'd have to check it. Blaziken is also sort of 50 50 with the edge to Lapras. Um, obviously, Steelix, Whack, and. Altaria lose typically. And Altaria is circumstantial. But you swap Flygon for Bronzong, right? Sure. So that's the recommendation. Yep. I thought we were saying swap Marowak for Bronzong. Flygon uh, for Bronzong makes a bit more sense, though, but then you also should have Flygon there as a Lucario. Yeah, so what do you do against Lucario? Yeah. Uh, Aside from Altaria. Yeah. Well, he has yeah, Altaria and Blaziken. No, and. and yeah, exactly, Bronzong, but actually. but you only have two, and Bronzong only checks, and do you really only want to have two? Do you want to have three vulnerable to Blaziken and only two checks? What, one counter? 
One, one counter, one check. Hmm. But if he drops Flygon, is he a little weak to basket on then? He's got Blaziken. He's got Dragonair. He's got Steelix. And Bronzong, well, we talked about the Flash Cannon um, situation with him. I suppose that's true. So, with, uh, yeah. With uh, update on the Lapras Dragonair, because neither, none of us, I know none of us have a Dragonair. We haven't really played with it yet, but Dragonair takes Lapras uh, with shields in play. That's against um, Dragon Pulse Lapras. But if it's against an Ice Beam Lapras, Dragonair only takes the two shield win, but the one shield win is so narrow that um, the favor goes to Lapras with three HP left. And a lot of these older set Laprases are going to be lucky and probably not ideal IV weighted. So it could definitely be situational dependent upon IVs, but it has so to successfully bait the surf. So if he drops Flygon for Bronzong, is he too weak to an opposing Flygon? That's what I was thinking. I mean, Dragonair does. I think Dragonair beats it. Dragonair, Dragonair beats takes it. Flygon hands down. Yeah, it absolutely shreds Flygon. And so does Altaria. But that's it. I think so the, is that enough? Yeah. yeah. But so but, if uh, you were Lucario to choose. He doesn't have Lucario. No oh. Lucario, no Bastiodon. Shoot. Um, no right. So Lucario. if you had to choose whether to be weak, because you're gonna, without the, the the top three, right, and Altaria. So he's got an Altaria, but without those other three, you're gonna have to choose what you're gonna be weak to. And I would rather be weak to a Flygon, which at least can be neutralized as a threat. Versus being new, uh, being weak to one of the cores, right? That's true. That's fair. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's a very valid point. I think this is like one of the only viable teams without Lucaria, without Bastidon, and without Lapras. Well, I mean, yeah, he's so that's just been interesting to me. Lapras, but yeah. But I think. I don't know, if he doesn't have Legacy Lapras, Dragonair might actually be the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool flex spot. Um, oh, he's... We had a comment. Polymer's up. Uh, mentioned Frostless. So, Frostless would be a total threat. Yeah. Yeah, Frostless would be an absolute uh, wrecking ball to the to the team. Um, whether you uh, remove Flygon uh, for Bronzong or not, yeah, Frostless would be a, a total blind spot. And I don't I don't know that I have a solution to that without making some serious adjustments to everything else. I mean, Steelix so. should beat it, and then if he gets wait the, what the regular Lapras, I thought Steelix. Actually, no, wait, Steelix, Steelix wins. Yeah, Steelix, Steelix crunch wins. Crunch. Oh, I, th I, th I think Steelix wins the one shield, but loses shields down. Or something like that. Well, let's sim that out. Uh, Frostlass wins the no shield, Steelix wins with shield. Yeah. Either way, so... if he swapped out the Dragonair for a regular Lapras, that would solve that. Not really solve it though. No, but it's just one more resistance versus a weakness. But here's the thing: is Frostlass. I'm not counting to be that common, and also Frostlass is on the glassier side. So, depending what order it faces stuff, it might only get through like one, one and a half mons. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think with running this team, you're just gonna. You're gonna accept the the frostless um, risk in favor of your budget considerations because you're you're not necessarily going for. Uh, yeah, I guess.
guess like a top tier team. This is a, a very budget uh, restricted team. Yeah. Actually, this. So yeah, I mean, process. you're probably not going to be going five and zero. Oh, you're going for and you're just trying to snag a couple wins. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is actually um, the guy that's probably coming with me to go fest, and he's actually the uh, the ace trainer in the gym, like in my gym. So we've been. He's one of the main guys that I play and like do be, like testing PVP stuff with, like locally, and everything. So I'm he's team building based off of recommendations that I have, and also what I've played against him and showed him worked well and everything. Like even if it wasn't powered up, so that's why. Yeah, I think that flag under bronze long would be the way to go. And then Lapras if he has it over Dragonair, but that's not. As important. Maybe you you he you need to look at like the spreadsheet and stuff and compare like a water gun surf Lapras's coverage to what Dragonair gives. Yeah, I'll say Dragonair has been interesting. I ran against a team with Dragonair, and uh, it's more of a threat than you'd think. All right, should uh, we uh, should we end it here? Or do we want to keep going? We, can just do this. we have two more, and they're pretty uh, pretty, pretty similar to the ones yeah. we've done before. Okay. Yeah. So J. Robin Stacks has uh, Bronzong, Lucario, Altaria, Lapras, Alolan Marowak, and Steelix. So this is. Uh, this is the I mean, team that, that's the team I posted yeah. earlier. Yeah. So, yep, already reviewed that team. Yeah. So everyone's comments for it, you can just go back to them. Yep. And then I'm just going to tag Smetra while you guys uh, introduce that team, okay? All right, so uh, this team is um, Altaria Lapras with Frost Breath Ice Beam, um, Steelix, Blaziken, Lucario, and Charizard. So, my first advice is going to be to TM that Frost Breath over to Water Gun. Because, um, like we've said, it's hard enough to make an Ice Shard Lapras work here, and Frost Breath is just a straight downgrade from uh, um, Ice Shard. Yeah. And um, then Wally's added also TM Fire Spin to counter for Blaziken, and Iron Tail to Dragon Tail for Steelix, and then second move Steelix as well. Because yeah, Steelix absolutely needs that crunch. You Steelix just isn't really viable without the um, Dragon Tail Crunch Earthquake. All three of those moves. Yeah, there's I guess some. Oh, and, oh, and TM and TM. Uh, uh, oh, does that overheat on the Charizard to Dragon Claw? Yeah. yeah you don't need Blast Burn at overheat. It's overkill. Oh, and then obviously yeah. the Lapras is going to need to add a second move for Surf so that you're so running at, Water Gun Ice Beam Surf. So looking at the... Assuming all the moveset changes, we're looking at the Ball Core with 150,000 dust investment and then double fire for the flex spots, which I'm not too convinced on. Yeah, because the double, the double fire leaves it, this team pretty open to Lapras. And Bastion. Because when, you're, when you're running Steelix over Bastion anyways, you're already weak to Lapras. So then running double fire on top of that is just kind of risky. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, it certainly doesn't want to take a Blast Burn from Charizard, and it certainly doesn't want to take too much counter damage from Blaziken. I mean, currently it's um, been damaged, but if he doesn't change right. that out, then Bastiodon actually can does a lot better against the Fire Spin variants of Blaziken versus the counter. I think it actually may flip some matches. I haven't actually took a look at the Fire Spin variants of Blaziken in a while, though, so I may be wrong there. Yeah, so what are we going to be? Maybe, maybe his largest consider threats. Consider maybe bronze on to add it in there, but largest threats is definitely Lapras or Dragonair. That's true. 
The Dragonair, I don't know, how does the Dragonair Steelix matchup go? Because Steelix does have Dragon Tail. But Dragon, Dragonair, Dragonair has, has Aqua uh, Tail. Aqua Tail, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to assume it real quick. I mean, it takes out Bastion on one shield, so I'm just going to assume that it does better against Steelix with super effective damage as opposed to... Well... It's still super. Yeah, still super. It's less bulk. I mean, I'm assuming, I'm assuming it wins, but I'm just wondering how much health it ends up with because it's taking super effective from Dragon Tail. Yeah, but super yeah, effective. I'm just doing sad. it right now. So oh, Dragonair loses to Steelix in all three shield situations, and like pretty handily, too. What? I'm dead serious. It only takes one. You don't even have to earthquake it or anything. You just double crunch it. So, no shields. Dragonair loses with Steelix around a third of its health left. One shield. Steelix has about a third of his health left. And then two shields is the closest just because it wears it down with Dragon Breath damage. And Steelix huh. is down to nine HP, but now has a crunch and almost an earthquake in the chamber. Today I learned. Okay, so I guess I'll tell my friend that as well. Don't bring Dragonair into Steelix. Yeah. That is not something that I would have suspected either. I've never ran that sim. Yeah. Or looked at it on the spreadsheet, just because I've never played with Dragonair. I guess it's another reason why I never picked it up. And that's with Rap Aqua Tail. Yeah. Well, you don't I think that's a really good way to... Just Aqua Tail everything. Plus, you'd run Dragon Pulse over Rap. Yeah, a scrap is not viable. Okay. Here. It is in uh, freestyle, but uh, not so much here. Um, yeah, Dragon Dragon Ball doesn't change a, anything again, but yeah. I think that's a great note to finish on because like, we're very familiar with the sort of meta matchups, but you start to get into um, fringe scenarios like Dragonair versus Steelix. These are both sort of um, swaps to the, the the main core, so you're you're going to be generally less familiar. So if you're running a team with stuff that like Dragonair or Steelix or uh, yeah, I, I mean Blaziken in favor of Lucario, I guess um, you're going to be you have to be very familiar with the very common matchups, and your opponent might not be, so you can capitalize on that. I mean, it is true. With like the newbie way of just hit everything and hope it works. <laughs> Which for a bunch yeah. of casuals is probably the best strategy. Yeah, that too. All right, guys. All right. Thanks for uh, listening in. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably do another one of these next week, leading up to the tournament weekend. I hope all of you guys bring in the gold, and if you do, post it in the. Uh, uh, the bragging channel, the unsolicited dex picks, or or wherever, and tag us so that we feel proud and we can take the victory too. And then there's also that uh, YouTube video and Silk Results channel that you can post um, your tournament links and highlight clips too, so that other people can check it out later. Because when you post that stuff to the other channels, it gets lost in all the chatter. But when it's on that channel, it's a lot easier to look back at. All right, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you to the other, well, my other co-hosts, and thanks to Quartzy, where, who's probably sleeping right now, for helping me mod everything. So, the teams that we've covered today will not be covered again. Uh, well, at least these teams will be deleted from the channel so that we have a fresh starting place for our next stream. And I believe later on this week, Valorash is going to be doing the same thing he did early last week, which is live streaming a bunch of uh, scrim battles with people from the Attempting server. to live stream. Attempting to live stream. Sorry. <laughs> My stupid Wi-Fi. Anyways, sorry. Alright, thanks everyone. Good thing you're all late-nighters. We're still not off. Sending over people to oh. another stream. <laughs>